I am here for the uh, Festival Comte International de Montréal as a storyteller. I am one of the few English storytellers in a predominantly French storytelling festival. I grew up in the Yukon in a small town in a big family. There was no uh, even, even, any, even a thought or a concept of anything approaching queer culture. There was one postal carrier that I had heard rumors about. So, and at one point I had a job uh, across the street from where she used to deliver the mail. I would like go sit outside so I could watch her like deliver her mail in a lesbian fashion. When I went to the um, library when I was about 13 to, to ask if they had any books, they brought me back uh, Radcliffe Hall's Well of Loneliness. I wouldn't recommend it for any struggling queer youth. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I just think that, you know, sometimes when I'm dealing with like super duper redneck folks or online and you see stuff, like I, I just almost, I feel sometimes with adults, like it's too late for us. People are, they're already, you know, like that guy, wherever he is, shooting off his mouth about the homos and all the kids are going to transition if they, you know, learn about him in school. Like, the, the, I feel like it's almost too late to have a conversation of uh, that's going to do, that's going to be productive with a guy like that, right? But I feel like if we talk to, uh, kind of sounds like I'm recruiting. Maybe I am. I don't know. <laughs> no, I, I want those kids... We have to stop calling it a public uh, education if it's not going to truly be a public education. If we're not going to provide, kids are coming out of the closet earlier and earlier and earlier, coming out as trans earlier and earlier. And if we don't address the, you know, the need for education and for how to how to um, how to meet those kids' needs for a safe space to go to school, um, that, you know, then we can't continue to call it a public education. I guess is the long version. <laughs> For me, I start with lists. That's how I start writing. I, I just start with lists. I just, uh, when I'm working on a project, I just make a list of everything that I possibly think might fit into that project. And then I, I, and I make a hard copy like list of it. And, uh, and then when I go to sit down to work, I look at that list and whatever calls to me the most um, uh, is, the, is the one that I'll, that I'll work on that, 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 per, that day. And, uh, uh, and then, of course, as you work on a project, it makes you think of a bunch of other things that you think fit in there. And so I just c continue sort of updating. That's how, how I sort of work. And what am I most proud of? I don't know. It's like a little Sophie's Choice question in a way, you know, really. But if I had to, you know, I would say Tomboy Survival Guide, the my latest book. I, I feel like it was the one that I I thought about the longest that I put the most work into, uh, that I was the most exacting. Like, I feel like by book 11, I was kind of like, no, I know what I want. I know what I want this to look like. I know, you know, I know how I, how I want it to be. And I'm not gonna be, not that I, you know, uh, that my publisher's a bully or anything like that, but I think you get to a certain point of, um, in your in your artistic career where you just are very, very clear about what your vision looks like and, and um, and uh, and you've figured out, hopefully, like sort of a gentle way of not compromising w what you think the heart of that project is. And I feel like that with Tomboy. I, I would say I'm, I'm most pr proud of that as a book. And then I'm actually most proud of that as the live show, the live show that comes with that as well. Um, uh, it's, the music is great and we worked really hard on it. And uh, uh, I think it's an important, um, it's an important piece of my sort of body of work and especially when we take it to places like Berlin or Australia or some of the places where uh, uh, Dublin um, where there hasn't been a lot of sort of non-binary trans uh, s stuff put out there yet in in that way maybe I'm speaking to Australia and in, in particular right now what's going on there um, I feel like it's it's important and that the, the kind of love that we get back shows me how, um, how vital that representation is for the people who come out to see that show. It, uh, yeah. I'm working on a new project. It's called Trader Time. It's based on this radio show that I was obsessed with when I was a kid called Trader Time. And um, 
it's uh, it was on the local radio station in the Yukon. So I'm writing all these stories, and it's not about a radio show, the my show. It's just using this call-in idea of a call, old school call-in buy and sell program um, as sort of like a window into these opening up little doors into these different stories that are all kind of strung together. And I'm working on it. My it's being scored by Sarah McDougall, who's a Swedish Canadian writer, and we are going to hire. I think a five-piece wind ensemble to uh, to play with us. She's a great singer, songwriter, um, great lyrics and uh, music. And uh, and then we are going to take it um, specifically on a tour of northern cities, so northern cities in Canada, um, Finland, Sweden, Norway, uh, Iceland, Greenland, um, maybe uh, Denmark, like that. Um, yeah, so it's kind of like a circumpolar conversation. Yeah, I'm working on a new novel, and um, I'm 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 looking at ways to s start to take a little bit more time off the road, and uh, ha have more time for introspection, have more time for like personal life, um, uh, maybe take a course. Like do something that it would involve being in the same area code or time zone for more than four days, you know, uh, yeah, like that.